Hey guys, welcome back to the wrap up for this weekend, which is the 16th of June, 2018. Um, pretty interesting week. Uh, as per usual, we'll go through the watch list that we created last week and we'll see how that performed. Um, spoiler alert, it was pretty good. Uh, I think another month of this list performing as it is, uh, I may start um, doing a little bit more with it, maybe some live trading videos or, or something to that that respect. Uh, we'll go through the market, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then we'll also take a look at the watch list for next week, which I build. And again, if you're new to me or, or this software in any way, I use uh, trade ideas and I use their back tester and to come up with uh, scans that give me some sort of statistical edge in the market, uh, however small, and then I kind of use my eye from there as a trader to, to take a look at the the scans that it, it the symbols that it gives, and then I kind of add my own little little flavor to those. Uh, I do that as well as uh, complete and utter auto trading with strategies that again are built. You can go back on the channel and see a bunch of videos of, of those uh, happening live. Um, and then on top of that, some discretionary trading, which I basically just use our artificial intelligence for as well. So this is more of uh, the swing trading side of things. Those algorithms are more of the day trading side of things. So, you know, I'm hoping that there's a, a little bit here for everybody. Um, yeah, so let's just hop into it. Let's just take a look. So the the SPY this week, um, we were kind of, we've been talking for a long time about how as long as we kind of exist in this range, I'm not really excited one way or the other. Um, and it looks like we kind of came to the top of that range and then had a little gap down here. Uh, pretty strong move at the end of the, near the end of the day to try to kind of reclaim most of that gap. Uh, that's interesting to me for sure. And uh, you know, the fact that this is a little hammer bottoming tail is interesting as well. And you know, we've got a pretty strong trend line here. So, you know, uh, to, technically sound probably the best thing to do would be to bounce off that tre that trend line maybe take another test pull back hit the trend line and then break uh, I don't really try to predict that far in advance but I think the main things to note is that we're still here so you know 280 to 260 area um, as long as we're there especially with the summer months we, we could be there for for a while all right, so let's look at the Qs. Relative strength here, not as much as IWM, but but still pretty strong. Where, you know, if you draw kind of the same range as on the spy, you can see we're well above that, and then we're even above the highs. The interesting thing to note is if you look at Friday, there was a big kind of drop and pullback, and then they were barely able, and they didn't really even make to refill the gap. But on the Qs, the drop down actually. Uh, encompassed yesterday's low so we actually held if you look at the wicks here right every time we tried to push under yesterday's low buying was met so the the technology side is is very very strong still iwm this thing has just been a monster right so again if we look at friday's action whereas the queues gapped down a bit and you know spent a fair amount of time under yesterday's low but got pushed up this every time we even approached yesterday's low you know and even the day before's low we only just nicked below it and then away we go and the trend on this one is still being incredibly strong you know we've got this this channel that it's kind of riding up here and then relative to these highs that we looked at on the other indices um, you can see that it's well well above that so small caps and tech definitely kind of leading the charge here with uh, with biotechs uh, lagging, but still, you know, if you just look at this trend, it's uh, it's relatively it's relatively strong here for sure. Um, everything is looking good, uh, except for the financials here. You know, and again, I always preface this by saying I, I started my trading career in you know uh, 2006 ish, right? So I traded through as a new trader uh, the financial collapse. So I always worry when, when financials aren't leading the market. Uh, everybody will say something like, this time it's different, it's all tech-based. Um, I heard that same thing during the financial collapse, is that don't worry, the, the techs are on fire, uh, and they're going to lead the market higher. 
I just don't uh, until it happens I just don't see it and and when I mean when it happens uh, I'll, I'll be watching mostly the uh, the spy to kind of get a, a glimpse there but you know still kind of range bound here so we're we're strong on the IWM and we're strong on the queues we're range bound on both the spy and the financials uh, energy this took uh, you know we had a trend line here that we broke the other day and then we also had a trend here that we broke as well so retesting these old highs closed a little bit below it with a very ugly day on uh, on Friday but still relatively speaking we're kind of if we draw the same kind of channel we're drawing on all these charts we're still in the top end of that range so I'm not um, a big sky is falling yet on these things so Again, my synopsis kind of remains the same. I'm going to stay as equally short and long as I possibly can on my swing trades as long as we kind of exist in here. If we ever come back to something like this, what I may do is just focus on the long side. Uh, but for now, I'm kind of uh, hedging, I guess, for lack of a better term, by, by kind of continuing to play both sides. So... Last week's list, we got uh, $4.42 if you had opened at the prices that were set and then closed um, Friday, which is what I actually did for most of them. So I'm starting to play with this now in real time where I'm just taking you know a couple hundred, maybe 200 shares of each one um, and just sitting and waiting. Uh, I'm trying to think of an experiment or a challenge or something that, that may revolve around this, but stay tuned for that over the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, the first one here on the list is BG. It actually did nothing all week. It didn't touch, it didn't trigger, it didn't do anything, and then you can see it triggered right here on Friday and then came right back up, so that was unfortunate. But that's kind of the, the way of it when you automate all these positions and these orders. You're, you're certainly not going to be precise as you would if you were a uh, more discretionary trader watching it. But um, JEC actually just kind of hit by a nose here and then fell out of bed. So that wasn't a good one either, which is why I'm developing these portfolios. Your hope is that you, know, you can get somewhat to a 50% accuracy and then the ones that you're right on, you make a lot more than when you're wrong. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Uh, AKRX was something that was interesting to me. Um, in uh, To be honest, in, in, in one of my accounts here, I didn't close this. I left this open because I liked the kind of breakout that took place later in the week. So we were watching it to kind of fill this gap. It did that and then just kind of slowly grind higher, which was a good way to do it with a, a bit of an explosive move here on Friday. And that's interesting because if you take a look at what the uh, what the markets were doing that we just went over on Friday, it was it was really countering that trend, which was very nice to see. So um, out of it for kind of this account, this challenge sake, um, but you know still holding some in, in a longer term account. I want to see if we can get you know anywhere up to a, a bit of a fill there, which is fairly long way away considering the the tight stop that we can put in on this uh, ESRX was great actually triggered on Monday uh, with a big strong day kind of doji candle here gapped up and is, was just held that gap uh, the whole time so that was a pretty decent move there I think that was the majority of our win um, there you can see I guess if you're new to this and again this is trade ideas there'll be a, a link in the description I'm actually going to talk about a sale they have going on a little later in the video as well. Um, but right here is a column that you can look for where, obviously, if it's red, you know, this is, so JEC would have been a $2 loss, uh, BG would have been a $1 loss, and then ESRX would have been a $3 gain. So that's just how you read that, that particular column there. And then this column, obviously, green means right, you're up on the position, and, and, and red means you're down, so... Uh, CLDR triggered pretty early in the week and then just chopped around for most of the week. Had a small gap down on Friday, which was good. Closed near the high, which was disappointing. But, uh, you know, we were just looking for what looked like a gap, trying to fill and failing. And, and that's what we got. Not really much of a runner, but uh, it was pretty good there. 
and LB, uh, LBRDK. Uh, it's very good here. You know, we just noticed that this thing had been really beaten up recently and it looked like it had found some support here and then was just nearing this last pivot. So as it broke this pivot, that's where we bought and pretty much just a grind straight higher. So I can't really complain about that one at all. And then what I'm gonna do is just take a look at these, but they didn't trigger uh, SYMC. Um, spoiler alert, that's probably gonna remain on the list because I still like the way it's looking. It just didn't trigger this week. And uh, INCY just was completely wrong on it. Just uh, it just pushed right higher, but didn't trigger us in. So really, no harm, no foul there. So, all right, guys, I'm going to put you guys on hold for a few minutes while I do and and run the scans for this week, and then we'll be back to show off uh, to show off what uh, what we found. So, okay guys, before we get into this week's watch list, I, I realized that I said I would talk about it and then completely forgot about a, a Father's Day sale that's happening for this weekend, so um, the 16th of June, uh, to celebrate Father's Day, and that's 25% off. And then the code word, which I will put in the link, or in the description below along with my, my link, is just uh, thank and then dad all one word all capitalized letters so if you're interested in giving a shot you get 25 percent off your first month um, as a good way to kind of dip your toe in the water and see if this this kind of trading and this kind of software is something you're interested in all right so now we'll get to the watch list for this week Okay guys, welcome back. So I've done the watch list for the week. So let's just take a quick look through it. Uh, so we're looking at OKTA here. This thing has been, you know, unless you're under a rock, this thing, you've noticed this thing has nearly doubled in price over the last little bit. Um, generally don't <clears throat> like these crazy Momo plays at all, but uh, we had a big kind of reversal down here, which for most people, you know, uh, reading social media and all this stuff, it, that was the end, right? Now it was time to short it, and it was going to go back to, to 40 or 30 from there. Um, ever since then, we've held actually pretty strong. And in the intraday chart, you can see that we've got a lot of uh, equal tops here at about 54, with a little break of this on Friday. So I think a continuation up here could continue a bit of momentum up to uh, about 60 bucks or so, or, or at least try to test this high to see if it's going to hold in. Uh, next is uh, Maxim, M-X-I-M. So nice strong move, strong healthy stock here. Uh, it's holding its eight day moving average nicely. And then it's just kind of been basing here along this uh, 61 and a half area. So I think just to break through 61 and a half, we have another catalyst here very close. And then we've got room all the way over to this line here, which is 64, 65. So pretty decent move there. Uh, again, you know, my stops are, are always obvious here, right? 60 bucks and, and we're out. So it's a dollar and a half to two dollar risk for about a four dollar gain. So that's a um, potential four dollar gain. So that's very good. Uh, P-E-N-N. -N, uh, nice, nice strong move, really strong stock. Got pulled down pretty pretty dramatically here, but it's it's trying to retest this area again. So, you know, if you look in your, your basic technical analysis books, a, a breakout of resistance and then a retest of it uh, is, is very, very strong usually. Now your the, the books will tell you that it should stop right at this line where it broke out from. It, it never seems to happen like that. It's always a bleed through kind of one way or the other. So I think if we get some uh, momentum continuation off this hammer candle here, uh, we could kind of try to test these highs to see if they're going to hold again there. And waste management, WM. Strong little uh, bear flag, or bull flag, sorry, if you look at it kind of on a longer term chart, we've been uh, fairly strong and it's been kind of riding this channel lower. Uh, nice little volume increase, about double normal volume, right? So you can see that here and 
this uh, single stock window. So again, people who are new to trade ideas, this is a window where you'll, you'll see when I click on my symbol, all of this updates with things that I'm interested in. You know, when is the earnings next? What's the short float? The average true range, right? Daily RSI, these type of things you can put in here whatever you want. One thing that comes stock is this relative volume filter. So this compares this volume amount to how much it normally does. So it did 2 million shares, which is a little bit under double what it normally does. Um, and that's interesting to me as something gets close to breaking this, uh, this fairly obvious resistance area here. Uh, having that kind of volume behind it is, is a bit of an encouraging, encouraging factor for that. Um, so next here for the short side, SYMC. We talked about this last week. It didn't trigger for us last week, but it also didn't spike at all. So it's, it's as interesting to me this week. Uh, basically just a, a big gap down. This thing looked great until earnings when we had a big kind of gap down here. We tried to fill the gap, failed, tried for another bounce, looks like we're failing, right? So this would technically be a lower high here, which could kind of denote a, a change in trend entirely. So I'm just taking a look to see if we kind of break this type of support area. You know, we have a gap to fill to 20 and then below that, who knows? MD. So MD is just a bit of a trend continuation. So if we look at this as the flag pole, and then we just kind of look at this here as the flag, we have a, a, a simple bearish flag here where, you know, from $50 down to 45 bucks. And then we've just kind of been chopping around here. So zooming in and looking a little bit closer, you can see we have a high here, and then a slightly lower high here, and a slightly lower high here, and a slightly lower high here with this kind of strong area of support. So a break of this support, you know, I we have room down here and then we know exactly where our stop should be. So again, that's the importance for me of a trade is not only what I think is gonna happen, but is it very obvious when I'm wrong? Um, I have a, a bad habit of maybe not being the most diligent <laughs> of, of being able to admit when I'm wrong. So. I like to look for charts that are very clear. And this is a perfect example in, in cell gene here where, again, same kind of thing. We had a strong move down and we have this kind of consolidation here with really not much of a, a attempt to move higher. So I think a break of this area, uh, we can come down and retest these lows here. But the important thing here is if you look at this $80 uh, a share here, it's, it's obvious that if we break this $80 that I'm just wrong on this position, right? So everything is, uh, um, everything is clear for me, so there's no debate. Uh, there's one thing that a lot of traders have problems with, with uh, a deer in the headlights look when they're not 100% sure where they're out is before they got in the position. You know, sometimes they'll let it go a bit, they'll, you know, quote unquote, give it room, which is if you're ever giving something room, it's probably a horrible idea. So, you know, on something like Celgene here, I 100% know if we break $80 a share, I'm wrong, get out. And uh, Gilead, very interesting here where we've got, you know, nice downtrend, uh, gap down, it's worked its way higher, and it's actually just filled the gap here. And after filling this gap, it's been kind of pulling back off. So I think if we get any uh, continuation or momentum here, uh, there's going to be a lot of people who saw this gap fill because it's something that a lot of traders look for and say, okay, that might be it. And we may have a pullback into this range as a retest. So that is the list for this week. So I'm going to actually in just a few minutes record another educational video, which I'll schedule to put out midweek. I know I've been very slacking on those i apologize just been very very busy so um again uh, usually throughout the week on twitter which is the same name as here on youtube you can follow me there i'll post little updates on on sometimes when these things actually trigger and you know little snapshots of this price alert windows throughout the week so you guys can kind of keep up on how this uh, mock portfolio for a week is actually going um so yeah, until I talk to you guys next time, just trade safe out there.